my gosh. I had to record him. Yesterday afternoon, he was farther down. I want to say he was not far from that wooden piece of wood right there. That's like the end of the wire fencing. He was so close to it, I thought, oh my gosh, is he going to walk around? I was just sitting over here with Ronnie, and we were just talking. It was such a beautiful day. And there is the other gorgeous horses. Like, look at them, guys. Um, we're going for a walk. And during the walk, we're going to explain why we're still here in PA and everything. What happened, and hopefully, you know, we'll be getting to where we need to go soon. Um, there was just an unexpected glitch. This actually is across the road from my friend's house. This is the other side of the creek, which is actually the cleaner water. And the reason I'm showing this um, is because yesterday uh, we recorded a mallard duck over here. He was having a blast in the water. And then I was watching. There was little turtles coming up to the surface and they were going back down in the water. Now I don't see one today. I might maybe on our way back. I'm going to look for the turtles. They're really, really cute. They have a dark body. And they have like little yellow markings on them. Yeah, yeah. They were young. They were babies. Well, like, like Jim said, they might, uh, they might be sliders. Yeah, what the neighbors said they might be sliders. Any of you guys familiar with that term? Um, we only seen two of them. There may be more down here. I'm assuming possibly in some of the maybe swampier areas down here. There, you know, maybe um, a nest of turtles. I don't know. But it was so cute to see them. And uh, this is a cleaner part, and this is where, you know, if you're going to find any kind of animals, you're going to find them over here. Not the site by Megan's house, because there was sewage pumped in there, and um, the idiots that pumped the sewage basically polluted it. I do have a video on my phone of the mallard. I'm going to see if I can upload that to my computer today, and I'll include that in this video, because he was so cute. Oh my gosh! free roaming chickens and there's a pretty uh red ones over there they're in the shade hi guys oh, they're all going back to the shade hi guys don't mind me i'm not hot but like I, I don't feel too good so but i wanted to show my mom this uh really really cool wooden bridge that goes across the river this way behind if you turn around this river here behind it goes across it and i wanted to show my mom uh where this bridge is Aww. Before Hi, we go, chickens. before we go to South Carolina. So, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a view of the water. Uh, we're heading to a better spot. But, um, river, yeah. That is a short view of it. For those that don't know, this is the Chile. How do I, wait, how do I pronounce it? Chiliasesqua? Chiliasesqua River. Chile, Chile what? Chile Sesqua. Chile Sesqua. Uh, definitely an Indian name. Uh, remember Pennsylvania? Okay. What a rich Native yeah. American yeah. influence and all that. Influence and history. You can look at many names of cities in Pennsylvania definitely have a Native American influence. And then the name Chile Sesqua means muddy flood river. <laughs> what a name. Because every time this floods, it, it does it floods a large area. Because this is a tributary of the Susquehanna River. Yeah, incidentally, there's one little issue with my friend's house and other houses in her town. And I never talked about this in a video before, but I'm going to now. Um, there is a problem with sulfur in the water. The water is terrible the smell you have to let Rotten it run eggs. yeah you have to let it run for like a minute or two sometimes three before you could take a shower I feel like the river is actually <coughs> down there. it's not good to drink it is not good to give to pets it's okay to shower but you gotta keep their mouth closed so the water don't get in so it... yeah because that and, tastes horrible I did I actually did by accident one time I was like Bleh. um so I am glad I bought a big pack of bottle of water 
because I was using that for Oreo. And you want some of the water? I was. No, I have my bottle, honey. I was, well, um, you don't? Oh, I have a bottle oh, in my yeah, bag. Right um, I was using it to brush my teeth, and I was using it for Oreo. Um, use it to make coffee. Like, you really cannot understand the taste of this water. It is true. And apparently, a lot of these little communities, not far from the Susquehanna River, have a problem with sulfur in the water. Because of oil in the ground. So, just a little interesting fact for some of you guys in a uh, different oh, state. Yeah. Oh, wait, they're, they're bulls. Yeah, I thought they were rocks. Just a little bit of a local, a local fact. Yeah, um, I wish I had recorded. We went for a walk the other day. Coming back, people literally had big empty jugs that are refillable, like those water fountains you might see in an office. You take a little cup and yeah, put yourself big, water. Big gallon. Yeah, or no more than a gallon. They're probably like five gallons. Yeah, gallons. yeah big uh, blue tanks of water that people get refilled for drinking and cooking and brushing your teeth and stuff. Um, all because of sulfur in the water. Don't mean to, don't mean to, don't mean to the, uh, thing, but I really like this leather jacket. Okay, that's nice. There, <laughs> now here's, here's a better, a better view. Oh, you're, you're such a chill day, mom, you know that? Oh, I know, yes I am. Here's a better view of there you go, the guys. cleaner water. Yep, and look at you can actually just see the river moving. Yeah, this is a cleaner water. That section of water by my friend's house is polluted with sewage. And that, that creek is not associated with this. The yeah, other creek they're different. goes down that way. It yeah, and the drain. farther you down you go, the cleaner the water is. Because there's not sewage going in, really. Yeah. But the other creek by uh, Megan's house is not associated with this because, like I said, this is a tributary of the Susquehanna River. It goes right into it. Alrighty guys, so we're going to stop for a moment. I'm going to take a drink of water. I know you all are wondering, why are you still in PA? Well, we're, I'm going to tell you what happened. We went Friday to get the budget moving van. Now, in the past, um, because everybody knows I don't drive, I have paid for you hauls in town and had someone else drive them for me. Never an issue. But when Megan went to get the van, they expected her to pay for it. They would not let Ronnie pay for it. Their policy is the information has to be all Megan's information. Um, so that was a big red flag because uh, that means having to move money. And anybody who deals with online banks knows moving money with net spending that is a pain in the ass. Because you gotta wait days. So Ronnie had argued, literally, with net spend to be able to move $1,500 to me. Then from my net spend, I tried to move it to my friend's PayPal. Because I have PayPal and I figured it would be easier. Wrong. PayPal only let me move $500. And. They gave me a hard time. I had to verify all this info, security questions, card numbers, address, social, my mom's maiden name, a whole bunch of stuff. Bottom line is they still had a 24 hour hold on it. I don't know what else they were gonna verify. I told them why it was an unusual transaction. I told them my son transferred the money to me and I explained why we had to do it that way. So last night I transferred the remaining thousand over to my friend's PayPal. Now, yes, it is expensive coming down to South Carolina. It's going to cost us over two grand, and that's not even with gas, to drive down one way. The van gets dropped off in Myrtle Beach. Um, another thing that occurred that really ticked me off, when I got my security deposit check yesterday, went for a ride back to Hazleton, one, my insurance really ticked me off. I had to pay for some of my scripts because they uh, wouldn't pay for them because it was two days early, How much which is charge? ridiculous, almost $50. Are you serious? Yeah. 
you know, what's the point of insurance if it's not going to actually do anything for you? I know in the past, years ago, if you were leaving state, you were able to get an extra script, all your prescriptions, papers. So you had them. Put those in your bag. So you had them when you went to another state. Uh, oh, there you go. Look at more of the river. Clear now. When you went to another state to give you time to find a doctor and everything. Well, no. All these laws of medical assistance. Open that up. Please change. So, what basically happened is I was only able to get some of my scripts and my carbetalol, which is important, I take twice a day. I cannot get refilled even with leaving the area because it's not due to be filled till January 4th. Or not January. Um, it's not due to be filled until June 4th. To which I said, well, I'm not going to be here June 4th to get it refilled. And I would like to have it so I don't run out in South Carolina. The medical assistant is very stupid. They are just, I mean, like, I paid for some of my scripts. Now, like, my tramadol I pay for, I don't use it very often. I get that script filled maybe once every three months. I pay for that because my insurance didn't want to pay for it because God forbid. They say it's an opioid. It's a synthetic opioid. And it's very low dose. And at times it doesn't do a damn thing. So I laugh when they squawk about opioid addiction with Ultram. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I guess I'm just a different type of person. And I really, like, no. I'm not someone that gets addicted to painkillers and things. Um, I am not really a pill-popping person to begin with. I hate the idea of having to take pills. This is where I'm going to take a break. Um, this is a covered bridge, which is actually has, really cool. It has a name on like Google Maps, but I don't remember what it is. I just remember Sawyer. Sawyer something bridge. I think this is actually how Jim got his name. So there's one kid, Sawyer. Oh, okay. But anywho, so, like, that was part of the reason why we couldn't get the van yet till money clears. Now today, my friend had to move the money into her bank account. Hopefully, it'll post there tomorrow sometime, and we can go get it. Um, and now another issue that really, really got me hot. Oh my God, I'm furious. My uh, new owner, landlord, whatever, from Harrison Street, sent me a check for $280.00. My security deposit originally was 600 and I am very, very aggravated and upset. There was no itemized list. I spent four hours last night on a website looking to see what the proper procedure is in Pennsylvania for security deposits. And I come to find out that if he was going to deduct anything, he needed to include an itemized list and it had to be done in exactly 30 days. So because he did not do it, in exactly 30 days, um, by law, he forfeits any rights to my security deposit, and I can legally, according to what I read online and multiple sources, I can sue him for double the amount, which would be $1,200. So I signed back up with Norpen Legal. I'm going to tell her that I don't know yet what day I'm going to be leaving state, so I basically just need advice from her. Can I go after him for this? Did he screw up? Which I do believe he did because I have no idea what he took money for. And a question I really need answered, which is, being that he took this non-lease renewal action against my son and I and other tenants, are we obligated to still have rent deducted from our security deposit when there is no monetary amount um, that we owed per se at the uh, hearing March 31st? Because there's a question of well, which formula would he use? The 900 rent he wanted to raise it to or the 600 rent that originally was before he bought the property? Because the 900 rent could be contested. He never gave us leases stating that the rent was going to be raised $300. So there's a lot of questions I need answers from that only a lawyer can um, answer. But I'm pretty sure I could still take the legal action even in South Carolina. I may have to have a friend in Pennsylvania get paperwork for me and mail stuff to me and this and that. And I'm pretty sure I could do a Zoom hearing because it's not criminal proceedings. But I intend to 
find out if this man did something wrong, which I'm pretty sure, based on what I read online, he did. I have no accounting for what he did. I sent him a message, and I said, I'm sorry, it does not cost $320 to haul out a table outside of that apartment down three little steps. And I said, and if you were smart, I said you would have talked to the other tenants. They would have put it out for you garbage night, which would have been Tuesday. We left Saturday. Um, and that would have saved him money for anything. So obviously this guy really doesn't know much about his property. Um, he also know. left state. He also left state. He left country to be exact. And when I told him we were out of the apartment, he um, chose not to answer me for almost two weeks. And then, sorry, there was vehicles going over the bridge. Then he turned around and replied to me and said, oh, like you're done. I am out of the uh, country. But still, that's not my problem, nor is that any other tenant's problem. And he should have had someone accordingly there to do a walkthrough and to hand out security deposits. And he did nothing to take care of that. A lot of traffic driving on the bridge today, so I'm going to take a little bit of break here, and then we're going to walk through this bridge. All right, we're on the bridge, and this is very... Right over the water. Oh, gosh. I'm not looking down. I'm not actually fond of... I am not fond of bridges over water. I am not a good swimmer, and I do have a bit of hesitancy about... Oh, wow. I have hesitancy about um, about walking over bridges like that over water. I'm oh, always yeah. afraid something okay, don't really break. Or, the these are muscles. Um, he brought one home the other day. He opened it up and there was like a bunch of rocks in it that it actually dissolved. I remember I was telling him in Atlantic City the muscles are longer, thinner, and they're jet black. Um, these ones are. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, but that's been laying out. Not good to eat. Who said I was going to eat it? What's no, 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 but I'm just saying some people do. I know yeah, people fresh water, you catch them in right Atlantic there. City where I'm going to catch your muscles in put them in baskets and then I'm taking them home. I, I remember my one ex when they came back from the ice, I said, they're going to spoil the bus right back in Pennsylvania. The they're going to stick gonna the gonna bus up you. and the bus driver is going to kick us out of the middle of nowhere. No, thank you. I also remember the birds picking up the mussels, dropping them on the ground. So they would crack them, yes. open Wait, maybe that's the trick. Hold on. Wait. and they would be eating the inside. No, don't forget the birds dropped them from way up high. Yeah, there's a carpenter bee who guards it. Uh, yep, I got it. Yep, that's all flesh. Yeah, that's what, if they were eatable, that's what you would be able to eat inside or cook. Well, I'm going to put this little guy back up here. Yeah, some sorry. animal will eat it. Sorry. Oh, look, there's some over here. Yeah, sorry for smashing you, little guy, but I want to see inside. Someone might have been... Digging for these? And yeah, no. catching them and actually took the meat out because they look empty. Yep. Somebody probably was harvesting the meat out of them. No, this one. Yep, that one too. Yeah, they all look empty. They look like someone got the meat out. Well, the, the one that I found had just rocks in it, but when I cleaned it, the rocks dissolved. So I think it was just like really hard packed mud that was yeah. shaking around. Because once I opened them, I opened it, it was like nothing. Such a nice area here. It is. Um, look, at, look at the river right there. Yeah, the water is nice and clear. Really, I really nice. Wait, I want to go down. Wait, is that muddy right down there, I wonder? Yes. I can't go down. I don't need to get these sneakers all muddy. They're white. Well, not to mention, I think this is still part of that one territory. I do admit, I am so going to miss this area. Um, just because of how peaceful it is. Oh, yep. wait, there's something over here. The Bridge Covered, an organization for collectors of covered bridge postcards. Um, hang on, let me see here what this is. It says, organization to help others who are interested in collecting covered bridge postcards. Uh, it's a lady in Canada, 
you can mail um, a form. You can join it. There's dues in the U.S. It's 15. Can't, oh, no, she's in Apollo, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay, I read that wrong. Um, this lady, they exchange postcards as a hobby. Um, $15. Her name is Karen S. Bittinger. She's in Apollo, Pennsylvania. I'm not sure where that is. You can join from Canada or overseas if you enjoy identifying, exchanging cards of old covered bridges. There's a lot of them around the country. I will take a picture of that if anybody is interested so you can read her information and that will be in this video as well.